Hi everyone, it's uh, Jason here at the Centre for Computing History. Um, that's Phil. Hello. Um, don't know if you know uh, anybody that follows our um, social media, Twitter or whatever, um, that um, uh, Katrina here uh, managed to find, I don't know how, she's kind of clever like that, um, a thing on a website, uh, on a, a fine art website, um, I think it was called JS Fine Arts or something like that, and it's an auction house, uh, and they had all this lovely art stuff and furniture and things like that, um, but one of the items that was on there was actually for what they described as a scientific computer. Um, so we had a little chat about it, um, I think a couple of other people online had, had recognised it as well and, and had mentioned it, um, but we put in a, a little cheeky bid and uh, funnily enough we actually won it. Uh, so we went all the way to Oxford and uh, picked this thing up. Now when I looked at it on the um, on the web, I thought it was this bit. Um, this was pictures as well, but I just assumed this was sitting on something. Um, and we turned up, and they said, "Oh no, this is all with it as well." So we had to get this in a in a uh, electric car that really didn't have quite the space for it, but we managed it. Um, zero emissions, though. It's all good. So yeah, so this is it, uh, and it was called the Magma computer, which was interesting scientific computer, had the name of Magma, uh, and uh, it just, yeah, really sort of took our interest. So we had a cheeky bid and this is it, finally. Now we haven't looked at it at all, um, been a bit too busy, um, you know, lots of visitors and things like that. Uh, so this is the first time we've actually managed to um, get it in here. We've made a little platform for it to sit on so we can turn it around and move it because it's pretty heavy. Um, and this is what we're going to do now, we're going to have a look at it. Um, yeah, so here we go. This is the, the computer part with all the switches. Uh, and then in this bit, there's got some boards and things that was the, the back of this was photographed um, in the auction. I thought what we could see was the back of this. It wasn't, it was the back of that. So we're going to have a look at it. Um, and Phil's going to give us a hand to yeah. sort of try and talk us through it. So it's kind of interesting. It looks a bit like a sort of PDP 11 style GDC it kind of. It has, it has the look of a, an early kit computer. Yeah, I mean, the switches to the MSI 8080, that sort of era. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And these are original switches. I mean, they look like they could be kind of um, modern um, 3D printed things, but they're not. They're, they're nice and smooth. They're original switches. Um, and like you say, MSI uh, kind of stuff um, with all these individual LEDs that we've got here. Um, they're, they're obviously not mounted on any back plane. These are little tiny LED holders um, with individual LEDs mounted in them. Um, it's kind of cool because. I don't, I don't really understand um, what everything is, but obviously we've got here, it says virtual address, um, and we've got 0 to 15 there, 15. so a 16-bit address bus. Seems yeah. reasonable. But why is it virtual address? I don't know. Virtual memory. Um, then we've got all these LEDs here, which has got data just there. Um, so data bus, but is it 16-bit data bus as well? Um, Condition codes to the left. Yeah, Zero, now negative carry. Not sure what V is. V, no idea. What's that one? Oh, V could be. I think. Eat. Eat. E A T. Why is it called eat? Extended so, attribute something perhaps. It okay. Could be anything could. Could it? be. Could be. Um, can you explain then why that one is magma? That activates magma mode. Well, I mean, it is a magma computer. Um, but it's interesting because I've never heard of Magma. I've a, never heard of Magma. As a manufacturer. No, nope, never heard of it at all. Um, so, yeah, why it has this Magma light here, um, it's a bit ominous. What's this um, one on the left? IP, oh, sorry, IRPT. Interrupt pen pending, okay. Yeah, interrupt pending. Uh, CPU status here, no idea, maybe it's a 4-bit code. And then 9 through 20 on the top with nothing below 9. Yes, and VMR as the... Virtual so, memory that's... register? Possibly. Yeah, 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 could be. We're all guessing here because we have no documentation and we've never heard of this thing. No, not at all. So, it's a learning journey. And then the switches themselves, we've got V, C, N, Z, L. We've got EAT again, so we can do the EAT switch when it needs feeding, maybe, I don't know. Uh, M, S, 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 S. So lots of switches labelled S. Uh, more lights, a trace halt. Uh, a run, idle, and a halt. So they, these kind of... They I mean, match up with the buttons below. Yeah. Run, interrupt, halt. Yep. Oh, um, and that's also reset if you go down. Yeah, a lot of the, the switches are sort of up to latch and down to pulse. So, I don't know what that is. I think they're basically pretty much all the same. Oh, no, they're not quite. That's three I, position. IPL speaks to a certain IBM heritage, initial program load. Hmm? Yeah, okay. Not saying it's anything to do with IBM, just they use no? similar yeah. terminology. So over here we've got load, and then we've got status and VMR. 
uh, and under address we've got R0 deck set ink and dep, so deposit, increment, decrement, set. So this is a way of loading data into memory locations. R0 Could is be. an interesting one. Yeah, not sure about that one. Um, so yeah, it's really quite interesting because it's, it's not anything. There's little hints of different mm. um, architectures or, or systems, but... Nothing to do with input and output on here beyond the front panel. There's no, no suggestion of any peripherals or external bus. No. So, and this has all been done, I don't know how much you can see on the camera, but this, these holes for the switches, they're all filed out. They're really well done, but they are done with a file, um, slightly, yeah, slightly dodgy amazing. edge to them. Um, and all this is done with uh, Electroset. So for anybody that doesn't know from back in the day, if you wanted to make your own front panels, you couldn't just print it out on a computer and stick it over the front. Um, you had to use this letter set, which was like a, a sheet of letters, and you would hold the sheet up. So for a uh, number two here, you would get the number two in that position and rub it with a bit of pencil, and the number two would transfer oh, to this. I am having flashbacks to my year eight design and technology class. We did this. <laughs> I remember the teacher saying the best way to get perfect lettering, What? how do you do that? And we all said, oh, use the rub on stuff. Mm. And he came up with, no, use a computer. Right. But of course, we didn't have any computers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, it was a really good way of doing it if you didn't have anything else. You could engrave front panels, you could uh, do that sort of stuff, but it, it, that cost money. Electroset was a nice, cheap way of doing it, um, but it was painstaking. And a lot of PCBs were done with the same kind of thing uh, back then. Um, so you would just rub the tracks onto the, onto the uh, um, acetate to then be photo etched onto a board. But yeah, this, this is all done with Letraset, painstaking, so all these lines is all Letraset. Um, and then it's, it feels like, and it looks like it's been lacquered because Letraset comes off quite easily if you scratch it. Um, so what you do is you'd lacquer the front panel um, to protect the Letraset. Uh, I did it, I made a, a, a box, Letraseted all the front panel, and then I just used the standard lacquer rather than a letter set lacquer. Um, and then when I come back to it, all the letters are kind of just blurred, and Ooh. the the, uh, the lacquer had kind of eaten the uh, the letter set, which was a disaster. But anyway, yeah, that's how you, you do a front panel. So I'm thinking this is. Um, I, don't, I, I mean, it's really hard to, to date it at the moment. But we'll have a look a bit further along the line, um, but it's probably sort of late 70s, early 80s. I don't know. The LEDs. Um, Multicoloured LEDs, at least to me, screams 80s. Mm. Like they were around in the 70s, but I get the impression that perhaps they were a bit pricey. For mostly it, mostly stuff. red LEDs, mostly yeah. Mostly red, yeah. dim. Yeah. There's no blue LEDs though, so that tells us. But they didn't come out. When did they come exactly. out? 2000s? No idea, but it was a lot later. Recent. Yeah, yeah. What's um, on the bottom then, if this is all the colourful bits? Don't know. I've locked. never seen inside this bit. I've glanced at this bit. But... It's locked, so. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's um, the end of the video, folks. It but I have got a big screwdriver, so we'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, let's, okay. let's turn it around and see what we can see from the back here. So, um, one of the selling points on the website is that it had a Gould power supply. Um, I don't know really what that tells you. I Lots of machines had Gould power it supplies. Was looted from they were just, SG1, I think. Um, yeah, they were just standard power supply it's modules. Stargate joke for you people. I have no idea what we are on about. Um, so uh, yeah, the, uh, the internals here, or the back of this unit, we've got um, a regulated power supply here, made by Gore, as we've just been through. Um, we've got a couple of capacitors, oh, transistors mean. there, uh, a bridge rectifier made out of in, uh, individual diodes. Oh, we've got another separate transformer. Oh, and another se separate transformer there. So it's, I mean, we've got a mains lead here. Are these transistors? This one says 7812 on it. 7812, in that case, it's a voltage, re voltage regulator. But I haven't seen a voltage regulator in that kind of package, actually. They normally heat sink them if so, they're doing any sort of current. Yeah, so that means there's not a lot of current being drawn through them. So, yeah, 7812 is a 12 volt voltage regulator. I wouldn't mind betting then that one's a 7805, 7805. 78. Whether the negative 12 is, and this well, is low current for serial. That'd be 7912. 7912 would be a negative voltage regulator. Maybe. Um, yeah, could be. Could be. Um, Can't see the numbers on the other side. No, so, but it's basically all power supply at the back here. We have got this mains lead that goes into here. We're not about to plug this in because um, we have no idea what we're dealing with at the moment. Um, but yeah, so that's the, the back of it. Um, when it was brought out to the car, um, this fell out the back, but that actually came from down there. But we'll carry on and have a look at these. Uh, now, so well, you can just see through to the front. Oh, the LEDs, all the light shines through, lovely. There are very colourful. There are boards at the top there. So, um, actually, yeah, let's put that aside. No, you'd have to take this top panel out to get. Ooh. 
magical. A squeaky. Magical. So that's like. Ooh. Yeah. Lots of exciting bits in here. Lovely rainbow uh, ribbon cable. Um, right, brilliant. So we're now we can't film this because it's on top. Um, we didn't plan this through. But we got. So what we have, we'll show you a cutaway for this. Um, but we have a number of boards in the top of it. Hey, actually, that's magma. So this okay. board is actually etched. It doesn't. It looks. It's a. It's a, just a, a silver um, okay. board. So it doesn't look like it's high production run or anything. But like it is actually board, etched as magma, it? which is interesting. Um, that's very interesting. So what we got down here? Seven four NMI. NMI six seven zero one zero. NMI six seven zero one zero. I've got a feeling. C seven six four one below that. Um, so that's seventy six forty one month of seventy six that those chips came out. I think. I think a six seven zero one zero. I think it's some sort of bit slice processor. Is that an AMD one? Uh, it's an NMI about. one. I'm um, sure AMD did a bit slice processor in the 7.6. Maybe. I don't know. I don't we'll know. I've got a feeling that's a bit slice. And four bits, perhaps at four bits each, gives you 16 bits. Yeah. Maybe it's an ALU. So that's interesting. Um, so does that mean that we can... We can, right? I think this one comes out and they slide out this way, because that's the back plane. Ooh. Oh, no, yeah, but let's have a look at this. What have we got? We actually didn't know that it did this. It's just, it's just nice to see. I'll come around this side. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's the back plane, um, all hand wired. Um, yeah, that really. This is wire wrap at the top, isn't it? Uh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's soldered. It's soldered as well. But it's wire wrap, yeah. Um, it's got power down here. Um, oh, there's all the switches on the back panel. I don't know if you can see just in there. All hand mounted. Every LED's got its own little and resistor. This is also dated 1977, but it says ah. Magma and M Ashby. M Ashby. Designer? No idea. Company name? Mr. No Magma? idea. We, we did ask um, the auction house if they could put us in touch with the person that sold it, and they said they would, but it's down to them to contact us, and we haven't heard anything yet. So, um, you know, we are trying to find out quite where it comes from, because it's kind of unusual. So, M Ashby, where's it at? Uh, just underneath this little double dot square. Oh, yeah, M Ashby. Okay. Right, 1977. Well, that's useful. Um, it's earlier than I thought. Just from the front panel. Yeah. So it looks like they probably went onto there. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of these chips on the top are dated 77, 76. Oh, these are onto the chassis. So these will go to uh, uh, some straps. Yeah. Um, hmm. Really interesting. So, okay, so that's the back plane there. So do you want to rotate it the other way? Come around that way and take out. Oops. That's not that's quite as attached panel. as I thought it would be. Yeah, it's just sitting on top. This is great. This is like one of those boxes for magicians. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, you need to take my fingers off there. That would not, not be a trick. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got three boards. Top one we've seen, possibly an ALU. I don't know if we can get that out to the um, below it, or if that's a bad idea. So, yeah, because they look like... Oh, no, 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 look, they, they've got... Um, they are key. Keys on them. Yeah. Okay, so, so these have little keys in there, so... They can't be put on wrong. These ones do as well. Um, I would normally take a photograph yeah. of this if we were doing this, but then bear in mind we've got two cameras out looking at it. That kind of does that job for us. So let's. So that comes off. Let's not take anything off. We don't need to. Yeah, that joins the two together. That ah. looks like some sort of data bus between the two. Yeah. And then this one goes off to the front panel. Right. Okay. Let's just remember that. Is that keyed as well? It yeah, is. They are. So that's good. And then, and then you want a screwdriver or something to help lever it out, don't you? Uh, just lever it a little bit by bit. Don't want to use a screwdriver on it and mark anything. Um, there we go. Oh, so now we can show you it as well. A lot more point-to-point -point wiring. So, yeah, that's a real mess of wires. Uh, so, have you got your phone on you? Yeah. Can you look up NMI? Actually, no, it's over here. Oh. Um, NMI... 67010 MMI NMI Oh MMI sorry sorry 2 MMI 27 No just 67010 67010 Because there's four of them I'm pretty sure that's going to be some sort of bit slice processor Yes monolithic memories ink 4 bit ALU bit yeah. slice device 
Okay. Okay, not, not processor then, but that does match you. this one. This is an AM2909, and that rings a bell as an AMD bit slice processor. Interesting. So you can see the detail on that. I mean, that's a real hive of wires. Yeah, of course. I'm, done. I'm wrong again. 2909, four bit um, address sequencer. Address sequencer, okay. Did I say address sequencer? Yeah, bit slice address sequencer. So no CPU yet. But it's unless, got a bit slice address sequencer, so, right, okay. Unless all these bits around implement an ALU in TTL logic. So, interesting. Let's just put that there for a moment. Um, oh, there's very little on that bottom board. And we'll yeah. just try and pull this one out as it is. Um, looks like just logic of some sort. Are these, does that say 2102? It does. So that's RAM. That's a really early RAM chip. I don't yep. recognise that number at all. It's just static RAM. Um, I don't really want to take those off at the moment, but yeah. yeah so, look, else under so it looks, looks like this bottom board. We'll get a, a cutaway for you. Um, is just a RAM board effectively? Not very much of it. Um, I don't know. I can't remember what two one twos are. One or I mean, four one zero sixes are sixteen kilobit. So that's got to be less. That's got to be four kilobits or less RAM. Hmm. Maybe even two. Interesting. So, where's the CPU then? It's got to be. Well, all I think this the CPU. Yeah, random logic this built around it. Is the CPU in its totality? Yeah, um, I guess. Mm. I don't know much about this sort of stuff, um, but I've read about these processors. Um, God, the boards are so big they sink in the middle as you put them in. Uh, let's just Re put this those. back temporarily. So that this one went there. Cool, okay. So we've got effectively, I suppose, processor board, address, memory addressing board, and, and RAM itself, maybe along those lines. There's plenty of space for some other boards in there, though. Really? So I don't know how maybe, far it's meant to be expanded. Maybe it would all be memory expansion, or maybe it's just a standard size cage. Yeah. But they needed it this big to have the front panel attached. Is let me just turn that round again. I just want to see if this board. Oh no, this was the board that was labelled up Magma. So yeah, this is a standard, like say a standard board. Um, but was Magma ever actually a computer company, or was it somebody just giving their machine a name? I don't know. Um, certainly never seen anything quite like it. Um, so that's really. really of course, cool. we're looking for the CPU. There's all this stuff in the bottom. There is a lot of stuff in the bottom. Um, so let's take a look at that. So this was the other picture that we saw um, in the auction. Mm. It was um, fairly zoomed in, you only saw this bit, so we assumed yeah. it was that bit. Yes, yeah, completely thought this was the machine. Um, and this fell out. Do we know where from? Well, these are labelled, so I don't know. This is the run stop board. Um, I don't know, mm. but hopefully there's one of these, actually, that says run stop. Ah, probably that one. So yeah. there's some interesting label on here, so MCCLK clock. Yeah. Set disp, that's presumably related to the front panel. MB, memory board perhaps, MCM control, skip to sensing and control. IRPT. Board's nearly half out already. Yeah. Um, this one's been cut down for some reason. So they've got these interesting little boards. So this is just sort of... Ah, um, PC, ACC and a RIF. Program counter, accumulator, arithmetic perhaps? Arithmetic, something like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so these boards have got these sort of edge connector things here um, that obviously make with the connectors at the back there. Um, but then you've just got this board here with all the components on uh, and it's just bolted together. So you just join the output or inputs of these chips to the pin you want them to go to um, with a piece of wire. Um, and then that makes up your whole board that goes in. It's, I mean, that's really basic and very low density on there and single-sided. Um, so this is looking more and more 70s all the time. Uh, so if it goes into run stop, that one goes into there. I suppose in the 70s getting a PCB made up would be a pretty expensive manual affair. You have to tape out the design yourself, get it photo reduced, sent yeah, off. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, and, and the, it's not like today where you can just send a Gerber file off to China. Well, it's not like, I mean, so these PCBs as well, it's not like they have tracks everywhere. It's just a very mm. basic PCB that delivers the um, power to where it needs to be. And then the rest is all done with hardware. Yeah, so it's not like a, a complete PCB. It's just more of a backplane to mount everything on. 
which is... It's been done very nicely, though. You can see yeah. they, they run all these wires together. There's very little in the way of random crisscrossing bits. This was planned hmm. very well. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, it's really well done, but it, it is completely handmade. Um, so now the other bit that I did sneak a peek at is down there. Um, so I, mainly I sneaked a peek at it because getting in the car was really difficult. It was weighed a ton. Um, so there had to be something in the bottom there. And uh, there is indeed something in the bottom there. So let's get this panel off. Oh, it's hardly even on anyway. These are these are not tight at all. Um, just in case it pulls off. But there's a big gap in the middle. I think something is missing. Um, yeah, that's not that's not, not going to fall off at all, is it? There you go. There we go. I want it. Get it. Get, get. Um, it's a plastic bag. Yeah, there was a plastic bag. Still is a plastic bag. Um, so taking this out, I don't know why that's there apart from the obvious to keep the dust off of this part of it. Oh, um, it looks to me. Like this thing has a hard disk in it, um, or something approaching a hard disk, uh, and that was really surprising. So here we've got a couple of lights, uh, power on, and uh, heads in. So heads is that? sort of talking hard disk to me. That is one hell of a motor. It is. It's huge. Now, and this big thing below it here is a must be the platters. I think. I think it's wide. You know, 10, 18 inches. Yeah, it's massive. Now in there it says uh, computer memory systems. Uh, in Leatherhead, Surrey, England. Uh, it's got part number 28-00 and serial number something else. Um, so, yeah, it looks to me that it's got some kind of disc, not a hard disc, it's not a Winchester, I don't know. Um, it's weird that you've got all this hanging down from these cards, or at least from the back plane. So these have these sort of fairly low density sort of header things but I can't see anything that they actually connect to and they're not long enough to connect anything mm -hmm. anyway so I've got a feeling something else was here um, so I don't think it's actually complete as such but interesting nonetheless we can't, um, can we open the other side to have a look at what's on the back of these boards um, CPU data bus has LSB at bottom useful to know clues is um, are there any other post it? No, but I've just seen oh, another board. board that's falling yeah. Away. Actually, what's that? Hello. It's a tag there. It's definitely 70s. You'll like this. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> silk, silk cut. <laughs> awesome. My granddad used to smoke them. Low tar. Empty. Ah, gutted. Oi! That was a bit of history, that. Um, <laughs> Weird. Uh, was that down there? Who's been smoking inside this machine? Well, they may not have been inside it. Clock pad. So we've got a little label down there that says clock pad for some reason. OPC decoder. So I'm guessing that's falling out from up there somewhere. Um, so let's put that up there for now. What's this? Um, oh, oh Barney. It's just a rubber. Rubber foot. Rubber foot. Uh, so we've got a big old relay down there as well. Um, yeah, so it's really intriguing. There, that motor is huge. We've got a is, and there's big a great old transistor. Big transformer down here. Toroidal transformer. Two great caps for the power supply, I'm guessing. Yep, so it's got a linear power supply uh, to drive it. But And there's some of the spring down here. I guess that's moving the heads in and out. Uh, maybe Weird. some sort of actuator. Yeah. I, I mean, so if we get we... in the back there, so if you get to the front, it's a little bit naughty, but. Um, there's, yeah, there's like a key lock on the front, which we don't, we don't have the key for. There you but, go. <laughs> They're never that tight. Hello. Um, <laughs> so, let's, let's, should we turn it around? Yeah. Let's have a look. My fingers. Whereas, which way does the door open? That way. All right. Yeah. It only opens halfway. Oh, uh, hang on. We've also got some more labels here. Um, computer. Oh, it's, yeah. So, computer memory systems do not. Connect or remove electrical apparatus, uh, the heads, without ensuring the heads are retracted. Mm, that ship might have um, sailed. Uh, this includes soldering irons, meters, oscilloscopes, otherwise damage to the written signals will result. Take special care where reference tracks are involved. Okay. Um, Main supply on the lower right with the relay, I guess. Oh, so yeah. You can turn it on remotely. 
No idea. Yeah. So that, so yeah. There's not even a, there's not a connector for that at all. Not a standard IEC connector. Um, oh, and then look at. So it's just it is a nice top left. Module. Someone's cut a ribbon cable. Oh yeah. It's a bad sign. Oh. Yeah, they have, and there's actually worse. There's loads here that have been cut. Um, well, we're not turning this on today, then. No, I, there, something's missing from it. Um, no idea what. It's incredible that hard drive. It's, it's, it's awesome. Isn't it? Huh? on these rubber feet just to keep the vibration down. Yeah. This must be a really early one. You might, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Computer memory systems in Leatherhead, Surrey. Never um, heard of them? No, I haven't. It's got these bizarre. Um, daughter boards that plug in either side of presumably the main. So that's got a, board. that's a delay line uh, module on there, or delay module, 0.05 microsecond delay module. Um, I mean, is it possible this isn't a data storage disk at all? But it's like the old drum computers where the registers are stored on rotating tracks. Yep. And refreshed every time they spin round. Yep. That would explain why there's only one so accumulator. So it acts as RAM memory effectively, um, just recycling the data around. Yeah, could well be. Very, yeah, that's a good thought. Um, I mean, but it's, uh, yeah, I, I've never quite seen a disk drive like this one, that's for sure. It's something that's um, quite new to me. Yeah. Um, we've seen um, disk drives in uh, a couple of other machines of this kind of size um, that we have here at the museum, but not, not quite this one. And also quite nice to see that it is made in Leatherhead, sorry. Um, oh, cool. So there's a bit of British kit, which is cool. Um, I wonder if the missing bit, if, assuming this was scientific computing in the sense of controlling expensive instruments, like the, the ones that cost millions of pounds, mm. they pulled out the I.O. module in the middle of the talk to that just to get it talking to a more modern computer. Oh, uh, yeah. And then they dumped the old controller. Yeah, could be. Could be. Um, yeah, it's really quite interesting. Um, I mean, so if anybody out there knows about this machine, Magma. Um, I mean, the, the, the circuit boards are labelled up Magma or etched as Magma. Um, if anybody knows what the Magma light is or does, um, give us a, a, a clue in the uh, uh, comments below. Um, or even what the EAT LED, I can't imagine what that is. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really quite interesting. I love it when we find things at the museum that are different and, and cause us to scratch our heads and uh, just like that. And uh, yeah. And, and make us wonder what these things are. And that this thing was controlling, theoretically anyway, as far as we know, some piece of scientific equipment, mm. so we're told. Um, maybe it wasn't. I mean, who's, who knows? Um, but yeah, it's a great name anyway, if, if nothing else. Um, if I had a computer, I'd call it Magma. Anything else we've got to say about this? Um, no, I, just, I just find it interesting that run is the red switch and halt is the green switch. Maybe. The colours don't mean anything. I was going to say it might just be for colouriness. Um, yeah, don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Um, you'd think the uh, Holt would be the red one. Um, um, but the, the magma light the LED is yellow when all the rest of that row are green. Oh no, there's a red one at the end. Sorry, I didn't see that. Um, yeah. So these labels on the front, by the way, that's the auction number um, for JS Fine Art. Um, keep an eye on their auctions because you never know, they might have something yeah. else on there. Um, but uh, yeah, really quite interesting. Um, we'll see what else we can find out about this. Um, mm -hmm. Or if you find anything online, please do put it in the comments and let us know. Um, so yeah, computer memory systems in Surrey. Um, let's see what we can find out about them, if anything, I haven't looked. Um, but yeah, same, this part's missing. And it had, like you've said, Phil, I've never noticed that, but that's got a ribbon cable that's been cut. In fact, and there's some bigger cables there, so that's gonna be, uh, power supply lines or something on the bus, yeah, because you've got these big um, copper tracks running along the back, or copper wires running along the back, um, mm. to supply the power to each of these, and they've been cut, so... Lots of labels all along this back plane. Yeah. Step two. There is. It was mentioned on the front as well. A lot of them. I mean, these are, I don't know whether that's just faded so much you can't read it anymore, but... They're um, all numbers, aren't they? You've got clock there. Are they numbers? Yeah. Oh, yeah, naught to three, maybe? Four to seven, yeah. So again, it, it, so this is this is definitely what looks like the chips anyway, a, a bit slice machine. Skip two um, is interesting. It's almost like it's um, like a conditional jump over the next instruction, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. So there's not much else. I don't think we can say on that one. Um, actually, if we can and just... we tipped it up to see if there are any labels on the bottom. 
Um, I'm not doing that. <coughs> uh, oh, actually, the door will come off as well. There you go. Ah, that's much easier. There you go, have some door. Um, so, I don't know if you can see, yeah, we've got another board here, which is possibly the main connection to it, but we've got more, well, either desoldered or, or cut wires. I mean, that looks like it's got a little wire at the top there, so it, it looks like it might have just come away. I don't know. Mm. Um, tiny, tiny heat sink. Yeah, it looks like connections to it, maybe. But you might be right on that, actually. It might just be more round than anything else. So, uh, take your mic back. It's a lovely looking piece of kit, though. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a really nice, especially this part of it, looks really cool. <laughs> so, so, there you go. Um, bit of a mystery, great addition to the collection. Um, but uh, something we know very little about. So if you can help us find out anything about this. Um, JS Fine Arts were uh, in Oxfordshire. Uh, so in all likelihood, this was got from somewhere relatively local to them. Um, so that might be a clue, I don't know. Um, the machine itself, Leatherhead, Leatherhead Surrey for the, for the disk drive down there, or whatever it is, drum store, I, I don't know. Um, so there's a couple of things there. Maybe that will help us start to get somewhere. Um, but yeah, there you go. Yeah. So that's the Magma computer. Um, we know, less than when we started. Yeah. Uh, no, no, that's, I mean, we know that whoever made it smoked silk cut. I mean, that's a start. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, there you go. That's the Magma computer. I hope you enjoyed having a look at it with us. Uh, if you've got the information, please do tell us. We'd love to know. So uh, yeah, keep, keep an eye on the, uh, the channel and we'll bring you something else next time. Thanks a lot.